Hello, Ectosage here on the Sage channel. And on April 17th, 2015, on Merrick Rosa, that's the CEO of Keen Software House, a blog was posted by Andre Petrozilka. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Now, this blog has some nice new information about planets, scenarios, and including a multiplayer rework to well, fix a lot of lag and other issues they're having, and also just to be more stable moving forward and to allow them to get things like, I don't know, the Xbox 360 version out there. Anyway, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through this, maybe inject a few little things here and there, and uh, just make sure you have the information from this blog post because it's pretty damn cool. Also, if you don't want to watch this and you don't want to hear me reading through all this, there will, of course, be a link down in the description below, so you can go ahead and click there right now just to go to the blog and read it yourself. Anyway, guys, let's get started. Hello, I am Andre Petrozilka. For those who don't know me, I am the lead developer of Space Engineers and Medieval Engineers. I joined Keen Software House in 2011 as a game programmer for Minor Wars 2081. And since then, I have worked on various projects in the studio, mostly on the development of Space Engineers. In this blog post, I would like to put some light on our current and future plans with Space Engineers. Currently, we're working on three big things. Planets, scenarios, and new multiplayer. First off, planets. Planets have been discussed many times, and players have wanted them for a long time. I would like to give you more information about our intentions and the background of the idea. When Space Engineers was released to early access, we were very pessimistic about planets, but that changed by the end of 2014 when the procedural asteroid generator was created. We realized that it could be possible to create bigger asteroids, more than 8 kilometers across. When we discuss planets in the team, we've realized we don't just want big asteroids. We want planets. With everything. So that's pretty cool. Obviously, he's saying that they don't just want to give you a dinky little rock, or even a big rock, like they kind of have now, where you can get you some pretty hefty rocks. They want to give you a massive, massive planet. It's going to look like a planet. Anyway, planet features decent size, gravity, affecting ships too, if possible, atmosphere, terrain, mountains and canyons, vegetation, trees, bushes, grass, visibility from big distance, 1,000 kilometers. How big should the planet be? Currently, we've been able to create planets with a size of around 20 to 50 kilometers. It's quite small compared to Earth, and technically, it's not a planet. Even Pluto has a radius of 1,184 kilometers, and it's classified as a dwarf planet. When we tried first prototypes of big asteroids, 8 kilometers in diameter, as mentioned above, it looked pretty big. With bigger sizes, gameplay issues emerged. Imagine a planet with a radius of 100 kilometers. You'll get close to the planet to fill your screen from top to bottom. When you have the default field of view, FOV and video options, You'll still be 73 kilometers away from the planet's surface when this happens. When traveling at the maximum speed of 104 meters per second, it will take you almost 12 minutes to reach the surface of the planet from this point. That seems to like too long. How long would it take to fly around a 100 kilometer planet? The circumference of a 100 kilometer planet is 628 kilometers, which means traveling at maximum speed, it would take you more than 90 minutes to fly around it. SOLUTION! Now, first off, before I read this, I'm just going to say, that doesn't sound like a problem. And they took people like me who would like to have these massive planets that would take quite some time to fly around into consideration, so check this out. SOLUTION! First, we were thinking about changing the maximum speed, but it's too problematic. We're limited by physics stability, bullet through paper issues, and other problems. We've decided to make planet size configurable in the world options, minimum and maximum planet size. This way, we can release planets soon and satisfy players who want small planets and players who want huge planets. It's possible that we will reevaluate maximum speed in the future. So there you go. Pretty damn cool, isn't it? Anyway, moving on. Gravity. Planets will have gravity which is similar to Earth's gravity. With distance from a planet, gravity will gradually decrease. Bigger planets will have more gravity. We plan to apply gravity to ships as well. So that's pretty cool what they're saying right there is... 
Well, from the gist of it, the wording's a bit odd, but they're, I guess they're saying that the base point will be around Earth gravity, so one. But they're saying that if there's bigger planets than like the smallest ones they're sort of talking about now, I guess it'll be even higher than Earth's gravity. And of course, they're also saying they want gravity to affect ships as well. So you can imagine having a decent exploration ship for space, and you accidentally get stuck in a gravity well and falling into one of these planets. And, well, you might be able to land your ship safely, but are you going to be able to have enough thrust to get back off of it? So... Pretty cool stuff there. Moving on. Atmosphere. We plan to add atmosphere to certain planets. When there's atmosphere, there will be vegetation. Other planets will be barren without atmosphere. Vegetation should be very similar to what you would see in medieval engineers. To achieve nice atmosphere effects, we're planning to use a spherical shader, which takes into account sun direction, air density, and distance light travels through the air and other parameters. It will be possible to breathe freely and refill oxygen tanks on a planet's surface, provided it has an atmosphere. That's also pretty cool because what they're talking about right there is basing the way the atmosphere looks on air density, which, you know, like you walk inside a pressurized room in space engineers, it tells you what your air density is, and there's a high, medium, low, and all that. Well, it'll be taken to effect on the planet, so you'll theoretically be able to look at the planet and see if it has high or low atmospheric density based on the different colors and the way the atmosphere looks, theoretically. There could also be other things change affecting, of course, like they said, sun direction. So as you move across the planet, you are going to see it change just from the different beams of light coming through the planet's surface. But it is, or coming through the planet's atmosphere. But it is pretty damn cool. Visibility distance. Space Studios has a default view distance of 20 kilometers. If you were to fly towards a 30 kilometer asteroid or planet, you would see nothing, 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 and suddenly a big planet would appear in front of you. This feels very weird and would break the experience. So we had to come up with a solution. One option was to increase the view distance, but there's a still a limit of 50 to 70 kilometers because of the Z buffer precision, but we wanted the players to see planets from a thousand kilometer distance or more. We decided to render distant planets separately. This allows uh, players to see planets 10,000 kilometers away, while other objects like ships and smaller asteroids are only visible at 20 kilometers. So that's pretty damn awesome that they're doing that. Because, of course, nobody wants to be like, oh, I'm going to go explore, and suddenly there's a massive planet in front of you. Not to mention you might already be being affected by its gravity by that point. So it's damn nice to know that you will see them from a distance. And, of course, then you can actually go, oh, there's a big planet. I really want to check that out. And correct your course and start heading over there. Scenarios. In the last 15 months, we've added a large amount of game features. But we haven't added much to the game play. Space Engineers is a sandbox game where you can do many crazy things without any goal. We're planning to add goals soon. You've probably seen the first scenario a week ago. This was just a testing scenario. More scenarios will follow, both single player and multiplayer. The primary purpose of scenarios is to entertain players who seek goals and achievements in the game. The second purpose is to teach new players how to play the game and to introduce them slowly to most of the game mechanics. A game like this, with a lot of features available at once, can be confusing to new players. And he's definitely right there. You know, when I and many others started playing Space Engineers, there were not that many features. And as time went on, they were slowly added. So we had time to learn and jump into them. New players, I have a new player video up. And it's actually already out of date. It's about half a year old. But there's a lot of stuff been added and changed since then. So you can bet that... These scenarios will be very, very useful for new players who are just getting into the game now, or even players who have watched stuff before, and are now starting to just to say, you know what, I actually want to start playing the game more, or really get into it, or even if somebody's played a lot of creative, like my friend Scott, who uh, found a few issues once he started actually playing survival with us. <laughs> anyway, moving on, single player scenarios. Single player scenarios will consist of a series of objectives with possible branches. Some of the players will be able to choose how to progress. Scenarios will take advantage of features which are already in-game. The first scenario will be very straightforward to teach players certain mechanics, like mining or repairing the station. Then there will be more advanced scenarios with multiple ways of reaching the goal. An example can be destroy the military outpost. It will be up to the player to decide whether to build a heavily armored ship with missile launchers or to build decoys for distraction and blow up one turret with a warhead and hack the rest of the outpost. 
We haven't decided yet if it will be possible to play single player scenarios in cooperative mode. Now there, I'm not sure if they mean there will be a special cooperative mode, if scenarios will be taken out slightly, because scenarios already are a bit odd. When you start them up, it doesn't give you multiplayer options. So there might actually be, a, you know, when you click scenarios, it say single player, multiplayer, or single player or co-op instead of single player or multiplayer. Anyway, moving on. Multiplayer scenarios will be designed to bring some competitive gaming to space engineers. We're discussing the design of these scenarios in the team. There are ideas for classic scenarios like Defense Station, Capture the Flag, Deathmatch, and less common scenarios. For example, where players compete in mining to deliver the largest amount of gold ore from a big asteroid to a merchant. Some scenarios will be team-based, while others will be free-for-all. So, that's probably pretty cool to a lot of people. I'm not much of a competitive person in a lot of this stuff, or at least I don't like to be, because if I win, I feel guilty. If I lose, I feel rubbish. But, that's pretty damn cool, and I know there's a lot of people who do want to see that kind of stuff, so that's pretty damn awesome to see that they're adding all that in. And then next, of course, they're talking about modding all that. Modding. We want to make scenarios fully moddable. It should be possible for modders to create and script both single-player and multiplayer scenarios. There will also be a simple scenario editor directly in-game. Modders will be able to prepare a world and select victory conditions in the UI. Modders will be able to use prepared infrastructure like victory game over screens, scoring screens, team selection, defined player inventory, possible respawn count, and more. So that's pretty cool. That is actually really cool. Because it reminds me a lot of Minecraft, what people are doing with programmable blocks, except for it'll be more just in the background and less of a big machine you have to have hovering in the world to actually make your little minigame run, you'll actually be able to just have a world that runs a minigame. It should be awesome. And especially they're talking about directly in-game editing. They still mention modders after that point, so I don't know if they're intending for you to use the in-game as well as some more coding stuff, but either way, it looks to be very impressive. Now, next up is the new multiplayer, which is... Whew, here we go. Update 01.015, which added multiplayer, was released on January 16th, 2014, more than a year ago. Multiplayer itself was written in five weeks. We knew it's far from being perfect. There were connection issues, lags, desync issues, jittering, hackers, and many other issues. We didn't want to spend two months rewriting multiplayer from scratch, so we decided to fix things that we could fix and focus on a better multiplayer later. We also knew that if we add infinite worlds, we'll have to change the multiplayer again. Now we're ready to rewrite multiplayer from scratch. The game has many more features, and we can take these into account when rewriting multiplayer. Especially infinite and procedurally generated worlds. We also have a bigger team, so we can keep adding features and also work on multiplayer. In the current version of multiplayer, every client knows everything. When someone is drilling 100,000 kilometers away, the client gets this information from the server. It's not necessary for the client to know it. The client should only get this information when he gets close to the drilled asteroid. In new multiplayer, clients will only receive information which is necessary and relevant to the area close to the position, close to their position, or camera position in case they are looking through a camera. This will reduce bandwidth a lot. It will also allow many more players in the game, depending on the server's internet connection. Information sent to the client will be prioritized. Important things like position updates will have higher priority. Less important things like battery capacity, update, or inventory changes will be sent with lower priority. This should reduce lags and make multiplayer more smooth. Every client is now sending position updates to all other clients. It's not going through the server. This can reduce lag a little, but it also requires a big upload because it's necessary to send messages to every other client, not only to the server. It also makes connection issues much worse because it's necessary for each client to be connected to every other client. With more players on the server, the issue has a much bigger impact. In new multiplayer, the client won't be connected to every other client, but only to the server. The server will validate data sent from the client, e.g. position updates, and send it to the other clients who need this information. Clients who see the original client. This will prevent connection issues and reduce network bandwidth. It's also a necessary step for increasing the number of players on a server. 
The current multiplayer uses the Steam Network layer, which allows us to easily send data between players, and it's very easy to do. On the other hand, it's missing some advanced features. To get advanced features, we've decided to switch to RackNet. RackNet is a popular networking layer, it's robust, and it supports many platforms, including Xbox, PlayStation, Linux, Android, and others. New multiplayer will work technically in a similar way to Halo Reach or the Tribe series, way of synchronizing objects and its properties. We've been working on the new multiplayer for months now. The work will continue for at least several weeks or even a few months before it's done. Stay tuned for more information about Ship AI, Xbox, Game Controller, and, of course, Medieval Engineers. Note, all images are public domain. Thanks, Andre Pajzilka. Sorry again if I mispronounce your name. Anyway guys, that's that. Pretty damn cool. New multiplayer stuff means maybe we'll actually see working pistons and... Well, I guess pistons already work, but working landing gears in multiplayer. We're also going to see a drop in lag. Maybe, you know, your friend will say, oh, I just moved five feet and you'll be another second before you see him move. Or I say a second, probably more like another... 20th of a second before you see a move because it's having to go to the server and then back down to you. But overall, I think it's definitely the right thing to do rewriting multiplayer from scratch. They're going to be changing a lot of stuff in that way. Some really cool stuff on their eyes. And of course, they in a previous post, I believe they mentioned that they're going to be redoing character animations. So we'll possibly have a new space astronaut character. I kind of hope we do because that would be pretty cool to also get a new animation set as well as a whole new character. Maybe, you know, same sort of look, just higher resolution maybe. And maybe it'll be also one of the Direct X11 stuff finally comes out. Who knows? But it's pretty damn awesome stuff. So, anyway, just to go over this all again real quick, we're going to have huge old planets that'll be around 100 kilometers in size or smaller if you decide to set it up. Hell, maybe even bigger. Those planets will have gravity that will pull your ship in if they get that working. Where they're going to have atmosphere on some of them, so you'll actually be able to see the atmosphere from space and know if they have oxygen, and you'll actually be able to land and refill your oxygen, presumably mine, and set up huge cities or bases on them. They're going to be changing the view distance for planets, so normal asteroids will still have the same you know, 20-kilometer view distance, but actual large planetoids, they're going to have a new rendering system set up for them, so you'll be able to see them from 10,000 kilometers away. Scenarios, they're going to be adding more scenarios to the game. I'm not too keen on these personally, but a lot of people love making them. And of course, they were very popular in Minecraft where people would make their own little missions for people to run through. So actually, these actually will probably be pretty damn awesome. And of course, they will be great for new player experience because a lot of them will be tutorial based to starting out with. And they're going to have a lot of modding support for that. And of course, the new multiplayer, which is looking to be pretty awesome and should cut down on a lot of the multiplayer issues we're all having. And if it's all going up to the server and then back, there's a good chance that we'll actually be able to keep our inventory when we leave game from a server. Because right now, of course, if you leave game and rejoin, well, unfortunately, your inventory is lost and you have to choose a spot to, re to respawn at. Hopefully, this will actually also change that so you can log off and you'll keep your inventory. Anyways, that's it. Thank you a bunch for watching or at least listening. Again, if you would like to read over this stuff on your own, there is a link in the description below. Thank you a bunch, Andre, for posting this and Merrick for letting him use your blog. And thank you guys for making the game also if you happen to be listening. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you again, everybody, for watching, listening, and I shall see you next time. Ta-ta.